All right, so here we are in the back of the bus. Um, so the one gauge that really gave us a lot of problems with is the um, oil pressure gauge. So the gauge that they sent is this gauge here, and it's um, it has three connectors back here. So when I looked at the documentation, it said that it had uh, a ground, a five volts, and a um, and a signal wire. So this is the gauge or the sending unit that's in there now. This is for oil pressure. So this gauge right here is the oil pressure gauge, and it only has one wire on top of it. So normally this wouldn't be a huge issue. You just put in the um, the new sending unit, and you run the new wire, and no big deal. The problem is this bus is 35 foot long, and to get to back here and up in and through, and you're talking probably over 45 foot of cable, and I think they sent um, six feet of cable, <laughs> so it's not gonna fit. Um, so I wanted to avoid running three wires. I know this wire, um, I traced it, and it goes all the way to the front, and I asked online and a few of the guys responded and said, hey, the only thing that that, that runs off of that thing is the, the gauge up front. So there isn't any kind of like monitoring stuff that says, hey, if the oil pressure drops to zero, then turn the engine off or, you know, make it run in limp mode or anything like that. This is a very, this is a very old engine. So um, that's basically for the user to know what's going on or for the operator to know what's going on. Um, with the oil pressure. So changing out the sensor shouldn't be a big deal, but what I wanted to avoid was running three wires all the way back here. So um, I asked the tech uh, where I got the gauges um, if I could generate a 5 volt signal back here, um, could I use that and then just send the signal forward? And he said, yeah, absolutely. So I could do that. So I could stay with kind of a one wire quote unquote configuration without having to, um, you know, run the five volts from the gauge all the way back in order to just turn around and read the setting and run it all the way forward. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. So the first step is to get the gauge in. So the guy was very specific at, um, at Speed Hut, which is where I bought the gauges. He said, do not use Teflon tape because it uses the ground um, as, you know, it does, it varies the resistance and it uses the ground as kind of one of the measuring points. So he said, use Teflon paste if you have to use anything. So um, we don't have any Teflon paste, so I'm gonna have to go get that. But anyway, um, that's it. It looks like the threads are the same. So um, we'll take it apart and see. The engine's pretty high, so there shouldn't be any oil. There we go. All right, I'm gonna test fit our new one. So this is our new sending unit. It appears to thread right in. So I'm not gonna worry about locking thread or Teflon thread until, you know, unless there's an issue. Um, with that, so the, this wrench is actually a lot bigger, so I have to go get the right wrench. That, but that looks like it threads right in. It came with an adapter, just in case um, it was the wrong size, but it looks like this one fits right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up, but that's, that's the install. The next part's the harder part, where we'll wire the signal cable to this wire here, and then we'll bring a wire up from, um, there's a control panel on the side where um, there's, it houses a bunch of the electric stuff. So um, 
there's a, a panel here on the side where I'll take the 12 volts and turn it into 5 volts and run it up there as the, uh, as the 5 volt reference. the signal wire so I'll have to go into that one all right and so um, that got me to thinking and how can I generate I have 12 volts in the back um, so how can I generate that 5 volts and so what we came up with is using a simple USB uh, 12 volt adapter um, these generate 5 volts uh, so it should work um, this one we just picked up at Walmart, so um, I've already kind of broken the casing. So if we take this thing apart, so we see that inside there's just a small circuit um, that we can then go ahead and, and um, solder some uh, cables onto, and then this will give us the five volts that we're after, um, and we can wire this up and then just use the existing wire as the signal wire, and um, that should work. So we're gonna test it out. So we're gonna solder up um, some cables onto this guy and then some, you know, just solder up some little leads so we can plug them in and stuff like that and, um, you know, give this a go. Okay, so we've soldered it up. Um, here it is. So we've soldered a little pigtail for the input for 12 volts, and then this little pigtail will have five volts out. All right, so we are back in this panel trying to find um, a circuit that we can kind of bum uh, 12 volts off of. So one of our requirements is when you turn the key on, it has to come on 
and um, we don't want it on all the time and so when you turn the key on it'll generate 12 volts which will go to our little USB guy and then 5 volts will come out and go through this wire this is the new wire we've run and then go into the sensor um, we could have used the one that there's a big fan back here that the big fan is on but um, that fan draws so much current that it's pulling the voltage down a little bit so that one's only getting like 11 and a half volts or something and they're registering about 12.8 at like at full you know when there's no load on it so I found another one right here number 45 and we will look um, so it's this one and we're gonna look in our little book to see what that power just to be sure that we don't you know that we're not overloading that circuit but our little five our little five volt thing should not should not um, should not pull much at all so hopefully that won't be a big deal but um, but that's what we're gonna try to do so we're gonna wire it into here we're gonna have our little USB guy here his five volt will come out of here and go all the way to the sensor so we've wired up our 12 volts to the two lines we've got the key on um, and now we're checking to make sure we have 5 volts so we can see there's a little light in there a little green LED which tells us that it's getting 12 volts of power and then we want to ensure that we have 5 volts at this end before we go soldering everything up to here so we're just going to check that real quick so we've got our voltmeter here and so we'll hook the red to the red and the black to the black and there it is 5 volts So this was the wire that originally came with that sender. So it's about six foot long, um, roughly. So um, anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it pretty short because the sending wire is um, right next to the sending unit. So the red one is five volts, the negative one is ground, and then the white one is the signal wire which is that, uh, that wire that's in the back that's right next to that little sender. So the red and the black, we are gonna solder in um, to these longer cables and then make a run um, all the way down into that bay where we found 12 volts. So that will then hook into our little USB adapter and that USB adapter will then hook into 12 volts. So that should give this five volts um, without too much issues. We're going to try to do this now, so, so this is the, the factory wiring harness, so hopefully we don't ruin it. So here we go. Alright, well, we wired up our connection, and now we've kind of decided to solder uh, the one in the back back here, because this is only 20 gauge wire, and we think that's like a 14 gauge wire, and so we're afraid that if we crimp it, um, it might not make a good connection, so if we solder it, we know it'll be a good connection and we can put heat shrink tubing over it and make it kind of weatherproof um, out here. So um, that's what we're about to do is we're going to attempt to solder, to solder this one way up in there. So um, that's what I'm about to attempt right now. So let's see how it goes. Can you plug in this on here? Yeah. Right. Uh.
Yeah, that looks like it's soldered. Can you pull them tight? Okay. Is that good? Yeah, that's good enough. Try to get this shrink tube over just a little bit more of it. Just protect it as much as I can. You know, just weatherproof it. Okay.